Welcome to this first impression stroke getting started video for workers and resources Soviet Republic. This is a early access game on Steam that was released on the 15th of March 2019 if you're watching this in the future and it's a very interesting game. Steam describes this game as a real-time city building tycoon game and that is a pretty good description but for any of you guys who are familiar with the various games, I would say that this game is is a mixture of City Skylines meets Banished meets uh, Transport Fever. And it's got one thing about it is, especially considering this has only just come in to early access, there is a really great amount of depth in this game. And one thing I will say from the very beginning, guys, if, if you are someone who likes city building games, but does not like the micromanagement this may not be the game for you but at the same time if you're someone who really loves to get down into the nuts and bolts of of the game managing all aspects of the game i think you may really start to enjoy this game that said let's just get into the new game menu and what you'll see at the moment there's the impression there's two maps in fact it's the same map but one is blank and the other one's got some small towns and villages on it i'm going to start with the blank map now, the difficulty settings are a little bit unusual. If you come here, you've got e very easy. It says effectively you can just do anything you want, unlimited money. And then you've got easy here. And what you see is that as you move up the difficulty levels, the complexity of the game it gets becomes more difficult. So you can see as an example here, at the moment energy management is disabled, which means you don't need to build power lines, you don't need to fuel your vehicle. This gives you an idea of the level of detail and micromanagement you're going to have to do in this game. Medium now brings it up to energy management, which means you've got to lay in power lines, and but vehicles don't need fuel. It also shows down here that education is now complex, and also that year start year, um, vehicles are locked by year, so you've got 1960, 1970. And if you go up to hard here, you can see energy management now has buildings and vehicles, but you can also customize it. And what I'm going to do is drop the frequency of fires down a little bit we're going to stay in 1960 and what i am going to do is drop the money down to i think we'll go to easy because i want to demonstrate the the mechanics of getting started guys and hard is interesting you don't get much money i mean i have played most of the time i have played as these settings on medium but we're going to go down to easy just to, so that i've got plenty of money to mess about with and make mistakes and demonstrate things to you guys and that's about it so let's just get in onto the map so here we are guys we're onto the map now there's no mini map to guide you around here but the map is really big and if i try and zoom out but there's a lot of clouds and it's effectively a big square and at the moment it's completely landlocked but what i will say guys is that there is a roadmap for this game and they are saying that the, there will be other maps in the future and also ships. So that means that considering this map is completely landlocked, therefore eventually there will be a, ship, um, a map with a coastline. I mean, you've got the edge of the map there only with the lake. Unless, of course, the ships only operate in the lake. Now, the way the map is structured, if I show you in the top right-hand corner here, you can see there's two currencies. There's dollars and rubles. And what you've got on two sides is you've got the NATO countries down here. So the way to visualize the scenario for this game is that you're not actually strictly playing as Russia. What you're playing is one of the Eastern countries which bordered NATO. So what you could say is, well, if you use the example of East Germany at the time of the Cold War, down here you would have effectively you would have had the Iron Curtain or the, the Great War which came down I think in the 1980s and if you come up to here and come up from the map here I mean you navigate the map with the WASD keys if I press this the center mouse button you can rotate like this the mouse wheel zooms in and out and if you go to the top you can it will scroll automatically and you can see here we've got this corner now where, where NATO joins the Soviet republics and what you will see along the edge of the map is these connectors. These are your connections to the outside world where you trade. And they vary in size. If I come along here, because I'm looking for somewhere to go, you can see this one's got railway, road, and power. So when you're getting started, what you're looking for is a location 
where you can build a small town or settlement because again while this game is described as a city builder it's really more of a, a national economy builder because I mean you wouldn't want to build a whole city trying to cover the whole map what you would end up doing is building a series of interconnected towns and villages is probably the best way to describe it again you need to shift slightly away from the mindset of the city skylines where you're building a single city this is very much about building an environment I actually quite like this location here I've, I've built on this ahead of time so your first consideration is your connection here this has got power lines it's got railways it's got a road and of course it's got a connection with the Soviet Republic which is the best connection you want to do when you start with now your next consideration is resources and because there's no resource map on here and if I show you the construction here what you've got is resources here so you've got oil rigs and, what, and one of the downsides of this game is you've got to go around the area looking for resources now you don't need to start with resources it, it will all depend totally on what you're actually planning to play I don't want energy where is it gravel and coal now I've seen a couple of uh, YouTube players they started making gravel and I, and I can understand that Gravel being able to make your own buildings is sounds like a good way, but there's not much money in gravel and it takes a little to get set up, so you don't really want to bother with gravel. Another one is coal. And there's some coal mines up here. Now coal at the moment is your only source of power to generate your own electricity. So getting a coal mine up and running pretty early on is quite a good idea. And I mean, we've got a good hill here. So we could build a coal mine there and then that would feed down into the power station just to show you guys if I cancel that if I come to here it does take a little while you can see energy relations at the moment we've only got a coal power plant again in the roadmap there the roadmap it does show that they're also going to introduce gas and nuclear so I'm assuming that eventually we will have nuclear power stations and oil fired power stations maybe even gas fired power stations but that's all in the future and but at the moment I'm not going to worry about exporting that I'm going to show you guys a, a, a fairly safe way to getting started for this city and we're just going to pause the game for the moment I shouldn't have wasted it because the, this game does have a little bit of a, uh, a dark night cycle so here we are we're down here straight away and we're going to build here and, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start by building a single road and we're going to stay on auto build with dollars because what you want to do is you've got two million dollars and what you want to do is spend the dollars but or most of your dollars first and keep the rubles especially at the higher levels because you're going to need to pay in rubles for the items you're going to import and at the beginning of the game you're going to import a lot of items because you can't manufacture stuff what i'm going to do is just build a little short road in here in fact it's green and i'm just going to let that run and one of the first buildings you actually want to build here is a road vehicle depot. I mean, technically I could put it out there, some, but we're going to play in the spirit of the game. We're just going to put this here. And I'm just going to drop that in there. Now this has got two road connections. And one thing you want to know about buildings is that the road connections, vehicles, vehicles not associated with this building cannot pass through here. So be aware of that, guys. And the first thing you want to do is come in here and this is starts to give you an idea of the level of the micromanagement here i want a couple of bulldozers uh, and we want excavators a couple of excavators and i don't think we need a road roller like that um, road crane i don't think we actually need that i think all we need is a couple of now th this is the trick this will again now give you leveling for free and leveling costs you money so if you take this off we uncheck that and what I want to do now and then you can adjust the size of this by scrolling and what I want to do is just start to do a little bit of leveling here and you can see you see the little bulldozers working and what I'm doing is just leveling off this area because one of the near frustrations of this game is that if you when you're placing buildings and other items it can getting the roads over hills and that can be there 
So what I've found is that what you want to do is once now you've got the free leveling, let's just get out of here and destroy the wilderness and level it off a little bit. And it just makes life a little bit easier. And so we're just going to level off a fairly big area like this. You can see it's not costing us any money, which is good. And you can see the night cycles just coming in. So we're just going to level off that like that. It means that when we build this road now, and we're just going to build the road in dollars, we should be able to put a road down here like that. I'm just going to let the road build in quite nicely like that. And I'm just going to, well, I'm just going to let it run because it's in the dark now. So you can see the road being built. I mean, I could, well, maybe we'll just speed, bump the speed up a little bit. Now I've got this initial road laid out. What I want to do is start planning my settlement. Planning is everything in this game. You've really got to think about what you're doing. It's not a matter of just plonking buildings down because the sheer level of the depth of the game means that it's very easy to get yourself lost a bit here. Right, guys, the sun's back up now. And what I want to do now is, is show you one option for getting your small town up and running if you go into construction and other various industries what you're looking for is a clothing factory and what you want to do is get in here and i think that will do now if you see the clothing factory here you've got the road coming out there and then you've got the little blue symbols show footpaths and the the tags that look like roads with yellow symbols in are quick connections and what you want to do is when you're planning your town what you want to do is get this in so what we're going to do is just drop that there and of course what we're going to do is just connect this up with a road here and we're going to drop the road down here road connections are important for two reasons one for so that you can get deliveries and two that if your sit your buildings are not connected by roads what will happen is that you will end up burn they will end up burning to the ground so here now the next thing i want in here is we're going to residences and we come down here and what i want is a small store and what i'm going to do is come in here and what we're going to do is put the store about here and we're just going to line this up it can be a bit tricky lining things up and what i'm going to build a store here the reason i'm building the store here and just to show you is we're gonna come on rope and what we're gonna do is just cut that up and, and what we're gonna do is and we're gonna pick that up like that the game's just gonna let the game run and what you will see is you've got the clothing factory here and we're building up it's gonna be connected to the clothes store that means that any clothing that's manufactured here will be automatically sent to this clothes store. And now the next thing I want to do, the game's just going to pause you. In the early game, you do spend a lot of time pausing. This will finish here. Now, the next thing I want to do is, well, we've got no population at the moment. How can I illustrate this? Well, just bear with me for a little while, guys, because what I want to do is put in here. And what I want to do is put a grocery store in. Now, groceries store doesn't have any other connections so what we're going to do is just tuck the you can see this now says that I'm, I've got to play and um, get the auto smoothing you've got to turn this off and what we're going to do is have the grocery store just tucked in here actually yeah we're going to have the grocery store here and what you can do is just plan this things like this we can have that and because it's paused and like that you can see all, also these also have auto purchase goods here see now the next thing i want to do is put in some education we're going to put a kindergarten in what i want to do is leave a space about here what we're going to do is get a, and what we're going to do is put a school here sometimes it overlaps a little bit you can see I'm just gonna put a school in there you can see I've got left mouse button to flatten but if I do that we get it for free and then we're gonna what we're gonna do is drop the road in up like that 
reason the road is white is because it's um, we, we've got nothing on to build it which is a bit of a pain I think actually I think there's a way if I if I do this and if we put I think there's a way if you put gravel roads in and auto build them for dollars because when we put a gravel road in like this like that and then I think just to speed this up guys I'll, I'll just keep building stuff in and the next thing you need to do is prepare some flats for people you've got a whole range of flats here up to great big ones here and you can see they've got here each one is different this is holds 150 workers this is 75 I think we'll go with 150 workers here and you know take this off just in case and, I mean you can angle them like this if you want so you can just create a, a visual effect like this and like that and, and then what can do just unlock that and now one of the downsides of this is we're gonna have to tell this to build these items we're just gonna tell it to build in dollars and it's gonna and this is one of the downsides guys is the level of micromanagement and I've got this with dollars so our little town is building up here put that in dollars the reason I'm using dollars is that because I don't trade with them I'm just going to I'm going to get here and what you'll see straight away is people are starting to move in now and one of the things you will see is here see so see the connection so people in that block is there and if you come into this one now these people can't get to the the textile factory here and what i'll need to do is clothing factory and what we need to do now is we're just going to purchase resources for okay so what we're going to do now is start to import some fabric and what that will do is so people will come in here they will start to build stuff here and they will then start to produce clothes and that those clothes will be produced for both the shop and to be exported and that's the reason why here, here. So you're going to get a little bit of money coming in what you will see also here is that if you look on here the this is auto purchasing straight away so you've got here and I'm just gonna pause the game again guys just so that I can go through the one of the probably the most important mechanic in the game and that is if you come to population here this option here on the top bar shows you the overall happiness of everybody in your in your city I use the word city to cover the whole map and you can see that they can be they, happiness whether they're fed whether they're healthy and government loyalty because you can see down here people will escape you've also got alcohol addiction you've got culture enjoyment sport now religion's interesting in the fact that you've got religion and and some players have pointed out that this is a communist regime but one building you can't build in this game is a church so you've got to manage religion in a different way and I'm, I'm assuming clothes quality actually means goods like this down here. So it says electronics, a television, and a computer. So, um, is that new? I don't remember seeing a computer before. Across the top here, you've got workers here. So that is for the population. Now, if you click on the buildings, you get a similar map, but that shows all the people in the building. But what we also get here is the profile of the people that are coming in here. And the ones in white are... Uh, people with a standard education these are people with university educations and what you do need is and the same applies to here see the, the educated people go to go to schools and I think the kindergarten the kindergarten doesn't need it but the teachers in here now what I will say guys is education is everything in this game because if you don't have an educated workforce you cannot get people working in here 
Although to start with, you get basic jobs, but as 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 your economy develops, you need more and more educated workers because there's also a research element into here. And I know I'm going slightly off track, guys, but if you come down to uh, where is it? Uh, halls of residence. Where is it? Guard medical area. So I think that's a bit of a bug there, guys. I think that's not meant to repeat. There's a so you've got a medical university and a technical university and the headquarters of the Communist Party. Oh, God. And, but, so what you have is advanced education. And when you've got advanced education, you do research when then unlocks new technologies. Anyway, back to the game. What I do need to do is we need to put some footpaths in. I'm just going to put... Because what we need to do is connect up this to here. And what we're going to do is... Uh, Gonna build these. I'm gonna connect that there because the ability for people to move round is very important. This is where the fun oh we've managed to sneak that in there. And what we can do is just connect you there. And we're just gonna let the game run. And what you've got is this button here, it can be a bit and what that will show you is if you highlight a building here. It will tell you if people can walk into this settlement here and when you first start out to get buses and trains guys you want to build something around like this which will allow people to get walk to work okay guys next thing i want to talk about is power and what we're going to do is import the power from the, this side here what's coming in here is high voltage power lines and what we need to do is come into here and what we need to do is step that power down to local distribution and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this power line out about here for a specific reason and we'll just click oops we need to left mouse button okay and i'm just going to pop that in there oops. that build sometimes it can be a bit a bit cranky guys That's it. Built it now. And I'm just gonna build that in dollars. Get that connected up. And what we're gonna do is connect that to there with the high voltage wires. And what that does is it brings the high capacity wires into here. But what we now need to do is power transformers. I think what we need to do is come into here and find energy related and this is and what you see here is we've now got a little electric substation and this is going to power this area here what i think i'll do is i'm going to bring that in nice and close like that and then what we're going to do is find the power transformer get back there say so this this does sometimes involve quite a lot of manipulating and what you see here is you've got different levels of power wires because i want to power this here i'm going to take the biggest one and what we're going to do is come in here and i'm just going to hook that up what you'll see now is if i come in here the building is without a power supply I don't think yeah we're exporting at the moment so what we do is need to tell it that we want to import power and what that should do and you, you can run down the line to see if everything is powered up and what you'll see now is and what you will see is that we can store 7.5 tons in here of of clothes so what we need to do is start exporting that as that comes through here so we've now got this working now I want to talk about something that's a bit of an obscure mechanic which it took me a little while to work out and that is that your actual population work eight hours a day and then have 16 days leisure but your industry works 24 hours a day so although that says that there's 80 workers there what you actually need is three times that to keep the factory going full out there's no resources missing fabric come on this let's really push this up high 
and oh yeah we've got to improve it that's it yeah sorry yeah you've got to keep improve approving things it's it, it's one of the slightly more awkward mechanics so yeah there's a mistake there guys so we've now got this working here and what you can do now is literally drill down in fact the easiest way to get people is here if you click on these people you can actually follow their day and this is comes back to the level of the micromanagement you can do so you can see that currently this, this person's on free time and you can see where they're going and probably it's not a good example and of course this is early days at the moment so let's just pick up uh, yeah. so and you can see their level of satisfaction so they're on 16 hours there and they got food and sport so just check the yeah you've got food coming in and what we'd probably need to do is put some sport in but I think what I'm going to do first guys is we're just going to I'm going to one of the nice things about this is you can it's just there's some infrastructure in the way. What's that? I'll just put some. Yeah, it's probably. I mean, the road it can be a bit cranky sometimes, guys. I think there's well, remember, this game's only just come into early access, so. And what I'm doing is just upgrading this with street lights. And people will move around a bit quicker. So we've got power in. We've got our textile factory coming in here. And what you can see here is the economy. I mean, we're not losing money at the moment. And domestic consumption. So you can get a breakdown here. Be, you've got to accept that you are going to be losing money straight away. And now the next thing we need to do now is get a bit of an export market going. So what we're going to do is come up here and purchase a truck. So what we need is a covered truck i think to shift stuff and again they've got all these different options here guys concrete mixers oil tankers and that's this is even before you get into trains and other bits so what we're going to do here is just get in and i think we can shift clothes so uh, i mean that's empty weight one ton empty weight eight tons so that's six tons of clothes. We'll just buy that. And what you're going to do now is just double click here. And what you get this tab here, what you do is you click there and you go to there. And, and again, similar to like where the purchase, you've got to click start. If it doesn't, you don't click start, it doesn't do anything. And what you can do now is tell it to. Oh. And this is the level of micromanagement that this game will do. I'm going to do is rock prop that down to 30 percent and then you can just leave that to unload everything and what happens now is this truck's going to come here and he's going to park in here and then as he's got clothes to sell he will take it to this port and sell it so we got a little connection there and that is the basics of getting your economy up and what you need now to do is work on getting people happier so what we're going to do is put something in the way what we're going to do is push this out here. And what we're going to do is have a road up here. I mean, this isn't min maxing, guys. This is just me putting things together from your point of view. And what we're going to do is. What we could do is put a sports ground in up here, I think. Because that's. We'll just put that there. And we'll have a sport ground over here that in and this will uh, path and the footpath and we'll just click that out here sorry it's got dark again guys and I'm just gonna pick that up to there so what you will see now is if I come in here and we find a worker it says past days unsatisfied demand but of course now I've put the sports in, so his free time is going through. A lot of people at the moment have a lot of free time. So what we got here? One child, one child can't go to school because there's no school or place available. Does that mean the school? No, the school's not playing. So we 
just building this up here. Let's check here. Oh, you've got contact to school. You've got contact to school. Oops. Let's get rid of some of these. Yeah, you can you can cover your whole screen with stuff. So according to this, this is all connected up. And at the moment we've got 48 workers here. If you actually show you here, it says you can see the shift counting down for this work here, but he's got no culture. So, so we've got a bit of sport, got some clothes. I mean what we could do now is pander to their things and we'll put a pub in. Because alcohol is another good one for so what we're gonna do is just put a maybe we'll put the pub over here. Because it's next to the residence. Can't build because infrastructure. And what you've got to do is make all the dot the dots go green. I'm just gonna do this the quick way, guys. I'm just gonna put a pub in there. And that should now connect up with that. So they've all got somewhere to go and have a booze or have a drink. That should make things happen. But of course, if you put too many pubs down, yeah, see they're all, they're all rushing in the pub. So that's how the basic infrastructure works. Now, what I'm going to do, guys, is do something. Let's pause the game here, because what I want to do is show you how you can chain things together. And so let me just see if I can work this out. This is where I've got to think very carefully. I think we can come this way. So what we're going to do is come here. Look, look push that. Just rise about button, flatten that out. And it's going to come this way. I may have to demolish that road there. And what I'm going to show you is how you can chain some buildings together to make an efficient farming system. And we're going to do it with the farm. So we're going to start with an, uh, a, a farm here. Now farms need fields, so actually I want it that way round. And what we're going to do is just come here. Yeah, if we put that there. Again, I'm just going to use the quick way, guys. I might actually just move that out a little bit, like actually a bit further. You can see the money going down because I'm not I'm doing it the non-cheap way. And what we're going to do now is keep going. And what I want is a grain silo. Um, and what grain silos do, you can see it stores crops. I'm going to put that here. And what this will do is store the all the connections. So you've got the farm here. And the farm actually needs fields. So let me just do the road connections just to show you that. I'm going to come here. Whoops. Then you can see... Well, I didn't level it here. And what's actually happened is this is where it can get a little bit frustrating, guys. So what we're going to do is just come here and just level this through a little bit. Just level this all through a little bit. And of course, because I placed the buildings, it's all going to be a bit messy. And I'm going to do is build this here, about here. I'm just going to actually click through here. And what we're going to do is just build this out like this. And what we're going to do now is just put in some crops builds. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a road connection in here. I'm just going to put two fields in like that. And of course, you're going to need to connect them up with roads. I think that might that'd be a bit too close. Oh. Knock those down. And I'm just going to yeah, just got to unpause while that's. I'm just going to let that build. I'm just going to connect this in, into here. So the way it works is you've got your farm here and then we're going to connect that to 
Yeah, like that. And what I'm going to do now is they come here. I've got to find it storage and warehouses. Heat storage. And this takes crops. And this is where I'm going to be a bit cheeky, guys. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have to put this. I'd like the road to be that way. But at the same time, I want that to connect to there. This is where it can be a bit messy, guys. I think we can get there. Just going to flatten this with. You can see once all the dots have gone, I'm going to put that in there. And hopefully, this will connect to there. Okay. And what I'm going to do is just disconnect this road and what I've now got is a farm feeding into the warehouse into the silo which is bulk storage because in here you can see the this this holds less only 225 tons this stores 800 tons so the way you want to see it is that the farms puts it into here and then the warehouse pulls it into there now there's several buildings that relate to food one's a distillery one's a food factory and another one is this is a livestock farm so what you can do is this is where it's going to get a little bit icky and what we get is the food factory this is pretty big so i think what we're going to try and do i think what we're going to have to do and this this comes back to what I was saying, guys. Is you need to plan your layouts. So and what I'm going to do is try and get that close enough. But of course, we've got a road there. So if I put this here, I'm just going to just build that there hopefully this will connect up sometimes it can be it will tell you that it's too far oops no oh that's connected up quite well so we've now connected the warehouse to the food factory and the next one i want is the livestock farm and we're going to try and get And what we're going to do is put the livestock farm out about here. And where's the road? The road's there. So maybe if we put this just a little bit like that. I mean, this is not 100% ideal. But this is just for demonstration purposes. We now connect that up. So what you're seeing is you've got the food. The farm feeding the silo, feeding the warehouse, which is now feeding to the this here, the, the food factory, and then we got the livestock farm, and then of course, more, most importantly of all, if we come in here, we've got a distillery, and if I can put the distillery in about here, if we can get this in about here, and hopefully this is going to connect up as well. And this is the way that you can really uh, min-max your production. So what we're going to do now is going to auto purchase, and what we're going to do is purchase food, not food crops. That's what I want. So what we're going to do is bring in loads and loads of crops, and we're going to confirm that. And what that means is the crops will come into here to get us started. And then we will produce food we will produce livestock here which then can be processed into meat and of course what we can do is chain this out even further so if i just as an example guys and say i know i'm we've got the livestock farm we've got the slaughterhouse here and what you can do is right here because just to just illustrate if i'm getting ahead guys you can see this produces cattle so what you can do then is come in here 
Put the slaughterhouse. Actually, what's this here? Yeah, the slaughterhouse here. I'm just going to hook the slaughterhouse here. I mean, it's not going to be working. Ah, here we go. That's because that's not. This is one of the problems, guys. So sometimes you just got to demolish the building and just let it run. While that's being done, I'm just going to knock. I'm just going to hold the. I'm just going to take that back in. And of course, we're just going to take that out. And that's going to. Have to take that into there. And take that right up to there. You can when you when you build like this. This is comes back to what I was saying, guys. Is you do have to plan pretty carefully. And what will happen now is people will start coming into here. We've got a road there. Yeah, this. I'm just going to click that up there. You need the road for deliveries to the warehouse, but at the same time, you also need the road connection for the fire station. We've got this area here. And what's going to happen now is you're going to get people coming up and working here. Obviously, we're going to need more people working in this area here. And just to finish this off, see if I can get the livestock farm hooked up. So, or slaughterhouse, what am I on about livestock farm? So, And just put this up here. Yeah, we now got that hooked up. And then that can come down into there. So I've got a, a pretty good industrial complex knocked up there for agro thing. And at the moment the fields aren't working because I didn't I forgot to buy some uh tractors, so we need a couple of tractors and couple of combine harvesters and what will happen is that these will go out and start to plant these things you can see here the farms have this full crop cycle of course this doesn't have power so the next thing we'd have to do is come in here uh, energy related and what we're going to do is get a substation in about there if we put that in about like that and then we're looking back to here. I'm just gonna hook up. I'm just gonna hook up into there. That will power up this area here. And what you'll see is we've now got food going into there. We've got some food flowing into here. We're producing food. And we've eventually we will start to produce alcohol once we've actually got people there so what we need now is to get workers into here and but i'm not going to do that guys because i don't want this video to be too long but what i will demonstrate now is we've got the food factory here and we've got our grocery store here so what you need to do now is go to here and we're just going to purchase a truck which can carry food I'm just going to purchase him. We'll click here, and what we're going to do is put the truck into the food factory there, and then we're just going to turn it there. And what will happen is that truck will now leave here, and he will pick up food there and deliver it to the shop here. And of course, because that we're now producing our own food I can we we no longer need to auto input food which will then allow us to make money and just I think just to wind this up now guys just to give you a quick run through here let's see we're not doing too bad now immigration Soviet bloc import resources here and we're not making that much money from exports at the moment I don't know what's going on oh one thing I did forget to buy because I'm on the advanced level is I didn't build a gas station I'm just gonna have to 
pop that in. This is where this game can catch you out. And this is why I was saying, guys, I really recommend that if you want to learn the game, work up through the levels. Or, or, or if you want to be completely crazy like me, just uh, go in at the high level and then just try and work it out as you go along. But what I will say, guys, is if you do go in at a higher level, uh, be prepared for uh, a couple of restarts and for frustrations. The other thing I will need to do is put a fuel a petrol gas station over here because these will eventually run out of fuel as well for the higher level. So we've now got our truck running. We've got a nice big pile of clothes to be stored here. So we're just going to go here. And what you will see, there's lots of information all around the map here. This gives you the idea of prices. So you can just see the truck now is coming up here to collect food. So we just watch this truck. You can click on all sorts of stuff here. You can see what the truck's actually doing, so what it's transporting. So the level of micromanagement in the game is really high. You should be loading there and unloading there. So you're not actually moving something. I say the mechanics can take a little while of getting used to here. Where are you going? Oh, he's out of fuel. He didn't last long, did he? I mean, I do like these dials, guys. <laughs> he's loading up the fuel and he's taking it away there. And of course, this is auto importing fuel from the outside. All right, guys, this is where I'm going to leave it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it interesting. And hopefully you've got now got a feel for the depth of this game and the mechanics. And, and yes, there are some quirks and foibles and things that will go wrong. But remember, this game has only been in early access for a matter of a few weeks. And the plan is for it to be in early access for between 12 and 24 months. And there is a roadmap. I will put a link in the video description for any of you guys who are interested of what's coming up in the future. And to be honest, I think this game is a game that's going to be really worth watching. I will be doing a proper formal series on this in the near future. So I hope you enjoyed this quick impressions, getting started type video for the game. And until next time, whatever you do, Enjoy your gaming.